Hello and welcome to another edition of UFO Video Addicts. Let me give you a quick preview of what I got coming up in this video. Uh, the first is this strange craft that was um, filmed in Chiefland, Florida. Also got this craft here that was um, seen over Peru. And let's see, I found this one on Reddit. This is uh, multiple UFOs in Russia. Actually, I think it's just one object. Multiple lights though. And then got this one here of something that was seen over Indianapolis, one of these light shows in the, in the, uh, the clouds. And then there's this um, news report from 1972 of a pilot um, talking about seeing crafts in the sky in Canada. Now think about that, right? From 1972. <clears throat> and then I got this a uh, little clip here from a Dutch news program, Dutch primetime TV, on two major cases in the Netherlands. So, yeah, they're you know they they want to become a part of the conversation um, concerning UFOs because they you know they talk about how uh, a lot of people are discussing it now in the United States and that you know since they've had their own incidents they want um, they want people to know about it that yeah that it's not just um, isolated to the United States or, you know, um, the Americas, that it's definitely a worldwide event. And then this is a press release. I think this is a press release from 1989, November 22nd, 1989, of all of these um, crafts that were seen in the USSR, Russia, Soviet Union whatever you want to call them. Also have this article here about supposedly, again, I'm not, you know, looking at these photos, these things could have easily been created by AI because it does have that look. But um, according to this website here, these were images that were recently discovered in some town called Eldridge Falls. So it's tucked away in an old wooden crate in the dusty attic of the local historical society, a collection of faded photographs dating back to the 1920s. Look at that. And then last is this um, press release. I think this is a, it would be considered a press release about uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Um, talking about his presidential run and how he is going to uh, push for disclosure on everything that the government knows about non-human aircraft, non-human life forms, reverse engineering by the Department of Defense and federal contractors. But anyways, we'll take a look at that. Hey, and um, you know, as I've said this before, if you appreciate the time and effort that I put into bringing this information to you, please give this video a thumbs up, please share this video, and more importantly, please subscribe really helps me out with the algorithms but anyways let's get to this first video here this was a craft that was seen over florida oh that doesn't look exactly like the same craft as, as this Right, look at the back. I mean, you know, there's definitely some protrusions here, but not like uh, not like you're seeing here. This looks more like some kind of CGI. Yeah, but I don't think this is the same as this. I wonder if this is a if these aren't these are an artist's rendition because it definitely doesn't you know have all the those flanges or whatever you want to call it in the back yeah you see like these things here right i'm not seeing that or even these projections here or this thing here on top in this light i'm not seeing that uh Yeah, there I see it, but that's just a photo, but not in the video. 
Where's that video? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not seeing that in this video. Anyways, that's that. Link will be in the description. Let's see. Let's go to this clear footage of a UFO at a high altitude in the sky of Peru. Video footage series. An interesting sighting of a ring-shaped UFO filmed in Cusco, Peru in April 2020. Watch the video and tell me what you think. Oh, you know, something like this would be really hard to keep in focus, especially at night time. So these, this guy's doing a really good job. Let me see if I can stop this here. Oops, get a nice there. Look at that. And you got this thing here. I wonder what this is. I wonder if this is connected to this object or is it something separate? Hmm. And you know, another thing interesting is that you could hear them, the, the, you know, these two people talking. And I think you heard cars going by too. No. Yeah, but you know what, my point is we're not hearing, whatever this thing is, we're not hearing any type of, um, yeah, see, yeah, look, you could listen to, you can hear them having the conversation, so you know the audio is, is picking anything up, the fact that, you know, we're not hearing any noise from this thing is interesting, so it's definitely not a drone. Because even if this thing was up, you know, pretty high, um, there seems to be enough silence so that if this thing was making noise even even at its height you know the audio the mic would have been able to pick that up anyways let's go to this next video here from reddit multiple ufos cherbalko russia from 2018 yeah i actually think this is one object with multiple lights I don't think it, I don't think it's multiple objects. The way it's it's completely moving in unison. Right? Yeah, it's the the, the camera movement. These lights are staying in the uh, same orientation as the camera moves. Yeah, I just think the lights are going out there. I don't think the, um, I don't think these are separate objects. Well, anyways, that's that. So I got four more seconds. Nothing much is happening there. Let's go to this uh, one here. I found on Imager. What do you think these are? Spotted over downtown Indianapolis. Now this is from October fifteenth. Actually, let me start it from the beginning. And you know, if these were like Klieg lights or searchlights, you know, you would see the illumination moving up from the ground, but you're not. So I got to believe that um, these lights are emanating from inside the clouds as opposed to being shine on the clouds. Anyways, it's just going to keep repeating itself. Let's go to this next link here. Uh, let's see. A yeah, UFO sighting in northern Canada. W5 speaks to eyewitnesses. Now, this is, um, you know, going to be uh, listening to the pilot that saw these objects. Check this out. One passenger, a government engineer, said that what they saw was definitely a craft under intelligent control. We're cruising at 
uh, 21,000 feet. And we first sighted in a position about there, coming across, I would say, about a 45 degree angle to our flight path. And you could see um, a trail, sort of like a jet trail. And as it got a little bit closer, we could see sort of a fog going back with this vapor trail. And we realized it was something unusual, and the co-pilot called on the intercom to the passengers, told them to look out the right side, they'd see something unusual. The course was roughly uh, in the opposite direction to ours. Uh, you know, real quick, I remember hearing a story about a, um, a military flight where the pilot told the, the passengers to look out the window at, you know, just like this guy, at an object that was that was flying outside, one, you know, one side of the craft. And um, he said that when he walked back here, there was one uh, high-ranking military official who was, you know, um, sitting on the opposite side. Everyone else was on one side of the plane watching this object. And when the pilot asked that military official, you know, how come he's not, He's not looking at the object. The guy told him, oh, he doesn't believe in those things. So he's not going to even look at it. And certainly, if it wasn't flying on a level course, it was fairly close to it. Uh, for the length of time we saw it, uh, there was no pronounced change in altitude. It was just slightly above uh, the aircraft. Well, it appeared uh, cigar shape only pointed on both ends, as though it could have been a saucer, of course, but it was definitely pointed on both ends. You can see that much of it. So he had to be moving uh, 3,000 miles an hour, probably, down at that altitude. Pretty hard to do with any, any equipment on Earth that I know of. He descended down to our level and went on by on the right side. And it's difficult to say how far away because you, you don't know the size of the thing. However, it appeared to us about a three quarters of a mile to a mile. And we could see a row of windows down the side, oval shaped windows. And also when he got a beam of us, when this bright light was no longer in our eyes, then you could see lights on top, lights below, and uh, this fog all over the whole thing, sort of as though it was creating its own vapor from the speed. As soon as it got by, we were all sort of clinging on that windowsill. We turned around behind it uh, to see if we could see it again, and uh, I think I also didn't like the idea of it coming in behind us or something. And as we turned behind it, we were sort of fogged right in. And we climbed up another 2,000 feet to try and get a look at him, and he just disappeared. We heard Trans Air uh, talking to Churchill, on a, climbing out of there on a, on a flight south. So we give Churchill a call to report this sighting, hoping that maybe the Trans Air flight would have been able to see him as well. And we couldn't get out on the radio. I have a feeling that our radio was blanked by this thing passing us. Anyways, that's as much as I want to play of that. The link would be in the description if you want to uh, listen to the rest of that. Let's go to this one here. Okay, now this one, yeah, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but it's just about how you know, the Dutch. Now, UFOs are also being discussed on Dutch primetime TV. People saw unidentified flying object, the Frisian and the Air Force Base Schorstenberg. It was a short-lived media hype in the 1970s, UFO sightings above the Netherlands. Then people laughed about it, and now UFO sightings are taken much more seriously. And birthdays, of course, you're always laughed at, but you just accept that. <coughs> there will undoubtedly have been jokes like, how was it with the Martians? My experience is that in that time frame, 1974, we were more laughed at than we are now. It has been a half a century ago, but their memory is still crystal clear. The first thing I said, yes, I see a UFO coming from top to the bottom, right from right. We were completely perplexed. We have seen them here in heaven's name. Look at, there's the gate. Let's call there. Your call has been registered. Please be patient. 
Hello, good morning. We're from One Vandenberg. What are you going to film, sir? We're going to film, sir. We're just filming the story of the UFO in 1979. Mind your speech, sir. Yes, we will. In 1979, George Jensen was a first class corporal on the Air Force Base Schorsterberg. The Americans were stationed there. Jensen is a dog guy and guards the base. I love the work. I called it letting out my dog. In the early morning of 3rd, February 1979, Jensen wants to cross the runway when suddenly he sees something anomalous. We see a large object which went above us. It's still dark. The lights went out. Then you see the shadow of an, I don't want to say a triangle, but you can clearly see the wings, but the nose you don't see. But that's also because it's all dark and at some point it just flies over us. It goes behind those trees and disappears. Rob Jensen is not the only one to see. Eleven other soldiers see it too. I'm outside watching. And then I saw it hovering above the runway because it went so slowly one could see it well. And then I saw the shape of that thing. Here, you know, one thing, I want to stop this one thing real quick. Um, you know, and, and, and again, talk about how, like, these objects are originating from earth right otherwise i think um we would have more stories or more reports by either professional or amateur astronomers of you know these types of crafts entering our solar system or being seen um coming from other planets now you know no doubt you know i've, I've played videos of gigantic crafts right, in our solar system or flying around the sun or through the sun or near the sun, right, of uh, structures that are bigger than planet Earth being maneuvered through our solar system. I've also seen um, videos by people like um, Bruce Cizal, right, of craft and uh, activity on the moon, right? But these are just, you know, like balls of light that he's capturing. I'm talking about how come astronomers, either amateur or professional, um, aren't capturing or detecting, you know, crafts that are shaped like this, either triangle shape or even the boomerang shape crafts, or even, you know, some of the other, other times people talk about seeing crafts that are the size of uh, football stadiums, right? I think that if these were all coming from other planets, and even if they were coming through some wormhole, or, or something like that, you know, they, they would be, a, you know, more than a handful of sightings, but we're not, we're not seeing that. All we are, you know, is um, seeing these things already on the planet. This is the UFO capital of 1974, Sunday, February the 24th. In the beginning, in 1915 to 2015, there, the sky was crystal clear and fighter jets flew in and out. Suddenly, at 2015, an object appeared that looked like a huge boomerang, about 10 meters long, flying over from the west. We were able to follow it for about five seconds. Like I said, you know, I mean, if there's a gigantic boomerang, right, that thing, uh, or that shaped object has been reported throughout history but again we're not hearing of you know reports of like boomerang shaped craft flying past the moon or flying past you know one of the planets in our solar system Willem Vlietstra is in 1974 14 jaar oud Theo Haverkamp 13 for months, a group of people in the Phrygian Gordic saw inexplicable things flying. The ball that we saw move at an enormous speed. From right to left, up and down. It stood still, but not for a while. While it stood still for a long time, it flew about 14 houses high, so it must have been 15 to 20 meters. It was very wide. About 10 to 12 meters wide, without light, without sound, and it glided over our heads. So everyone was looking at it at the same time. Gee, what is that? Gora Dick was very special, also internationally. Look, in America, you had so-called UFO flaps, a certain location and time. 
a certain time span where suddenly a lot of UFOs are observed and we didn't know that in the Netherlands. Tade, 50 years later, he wrote a book about it. Well, anyways, that's as much as I want to play of that. So, you know, these are yeah, incidents that's happening all over the world. Uh, let's go to this one here. Oh, yeah, so now this is, um, I think this is like a press release from 1989, November of 1989. USSR, media report multiple multitude of UFO sightings. Leading Soviet newspapers and journals have recently begun publishing an increasing number of articles and news reports on sightings of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, in various areas of the Soviet Union. A permanent center for the study of UFOs has been established in Moscow to conduct research and support the investigation of reported sightings. Now remember, this is from 1989. Right. And think about, you know, where we are now. As setting the tone for this media coverage was an article in the 9 July 1989. Uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, which referred to many recent reports of UFO sightings in the USSR. Interviewed by the paper, P. Propopenko, director of a laboratory for the study of anomalous phenomena, stated that a permanent center for the study of UFOs is being established in the Soviet Union. In addition to conducting research and presenting lectures on UFOs, the center will support the investigation of reported sightings. In referring to an issue of the paper published in July 1988 that included a report on an amazing event that took place on Hill 611 near the village of Dal Negrosk in Primorsky Cray. I'm butchering that. The article noted that the event is still under investigation. Many observers saw a flying sphere crash into one of the hill's twin peaks, and physicists and other scientists from the Siberian Division of the USSR Academy of Sciences are still studying the fine mesh small spherical objects and pieces of glass that are considered to be small remnants left behind by the sphere. According to the article, the alleged spacecraft was nearly obliterated in the crash, but there appeared to be enough material at the site for the scientists, a mixture of UFO enthusiasts and skeptics, to eventually penetrate this mystery. Well, anyways, this goes on five more pages of uh, different sightings that happen, you know, all over Russia. Again, you know, yeah, this isn't, you know, UFO sightings aren't isolated to the United States. They're happening everywhere, and they've been happening for a long, long time. Here, Mysteries of the Past, 1920s UFO sighting preserved in recently discovered photos. Now, like I've said, these photos, you know, they have that, that AI-generated look. So, I... Uh, I cannot say whether or not these are real. It says, In the quiet town of Eldridge Falls, our archivist stumbled upon a hidden treasure trove that would rewrite history and ignite the flames of speculation about extraterrestrial encounters. Tucked away in an old wooden crate in the dusty attic of the local historical society, a collection of faded photographs dating back to the 1920s unveiled a startling secret, UFO sightings long before they had become a cultural phenomenon. The photos, meticulously preserved but forgotten for decades, depicted scenes of quaint 1920s life, dusty streets, vintage automobiles, and people in period clothing. Yet amidst these seemingly ordinary snapshots, there were startling anomalies. Unidentified flying objects, sleek and metallic, hovered in the sky above horse-drawn carriages and narrow cobblestone streets. Archivists and historians, initially skeptical, meticulously examined the photograph, Photographs searching for signs of manipulation or forgery. However, the aged paper and authentic sepia tones of the images seem to tell a different story. A story of a bygone era touched by the inexplicable. Again, like I said, you know, to me, these have... I mean, yeah, they are sepia and stuff like that, but they have that, that AI-generated look to, to it. One particular image captured the attention of UFO enthusiasts and historians alike. It showed a group of townspeople gazing skyward in amazement as a saucer-shaped object cast a particular glow over the town square. 
The expressions on their faces range from awe to disbelief, encapsulating the spirit of a time when the idea of visitors from another world was beyond the realm of common understanding. See here again, this is visitors from another world. Again, this is part of the brainwashing. You know, where on this ship does it say anything? Again, if this is real or, you know, any, any of the um, reports, you know, where did this say, like, you know, made on, you know, uh, some other planet? None of these have a made by. So how can you really say that they're visitors from another world as opposed to other intelligent beings, you know, that uh, exist on this planet with us? Anyways, that's that. Let's go to this last link here. And this is just about Robert Kennedy, um, who's using UFO disclosure as part of his uh, platform. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has promised to disclose what the government knows. Dear Taylor, non-human aircrafts, non-human life forms, reverse engineering by the Department of Defense and federal contractors, Roswell. In light of recent congressional testimony from government whistleblowers, these topics, these topics once reserved for late night sci-fi TV, are freely discussed publicly today. The testimonies of various Defense Department personnel was shocking. They went on the record saying that they're they are aware of and have knowledge of the existence of non-human life and non-human aircraft, as well as as well as of the government's attempts to reverse engineer the aircrafts they've recovered. Whatever your views are on unidentified aerial phenomenon, formerly UFOs, or unidentified flying objects, we believe the United States government should come clean with the American people about what they know and what, if anything, they have been hiding. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has promised to disclose what the government knows, what they aren't sharing, and most importantly, if we do have knowledge and possession of beings and aircrafts of non-human origin. This is just one of the many issues that RFK Jr. has promised to handle with full transparency to the public. But we will never have the answers if he doesn't win the battle for the White House in November. Anyways, you know, I want to also you know, point out here how they... They say non-human origin. Again, you know, nowhere in here are they saying that these objects are off-planet, are extraterrestrial, or alien. Right? They're calling they're just calling them non-human crafts, non-human life, non-human origin. Because I think he knows that these, you know, that these these being and these crafts originate from Earth. So, you know, they're not necessarily homo sapien, but they're definitely non-human. Anyways, thank you so much for making it till the end of this video. Uh, again, if you appreciate the time and effort that I put into bringing this information to you, please give this video a thumbs up. Please share this video. And more importantly, please subscribe. Until next time, take care.